welcome back everyone thank you so much for joining me today before we get into today's video i'd love for you to tell me what is your favorite naval warship what is it mine is obviously hms victory the most beautiful ship of the line uh, of course being the death place of our beautiful nelson the commander of the royal navy at the time but today we are talking about the arsenal ship and this is quite the abstract weapon system. It's a conceptual design of a ship that uh, I never even knew existed until I saw a rather interesting, I guess, art rendition or conceptual vision of this ship in action, which is basically just an entirely massive missile ship, just completely filled with missiles back to front. It does not have the ability to launch, you know, projectiles in terms of cannons or guns. It is just purely missile based and that is very fascinating to me because when we look at modern naval warfare it actually makes sense and i'll talk to you a little bit as to why i feel that way but the arsenal ship is certainly a very very visionary concept in naval warfare it stands as the nexus of historical precedence and cutting edge technology and innovation for its time it was a very bold move and a very bold decision to look at this kind of design and darpa of course we all know who darpa is who design and produce weapon systems for the United States military really thought that this could be a winner. The conversation that we're going to talk about today though really gives a bit of a comprehensive exploration as the conceptual design and the strategic implications of this ship, shedding light on its evolution, some of its design principles and actually the potential for it to completely reshape modern naval strategies even though it didn't actually come to fruition as of today. Now, the variety and the design of ships in the American Navy have been subject to a very few large-scale changes during the past 45 years. And when they have occurred, they were typically the result of technological developments, new operational concepts, or a combination of both. The result was commonly incremental improvements upon existing ship designs. US strategy is consistently changing while technological innovation accelerates. The combination of these kind of events raises the question as to whether or not improvements to existing ships really suffice for the future Navy, and is there a need for an entirely new type of platform? The Navy evidently decided upon the latter. On the 18th of March 1995, the Navy signed an agreement with the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA, which formalized a cooperative effort toward the research and development of a radically different seagoing platform termed the Arsenal Ship. The platform, when completed, would be vastly different from anything the Navy has had in its inventory. Conceptually designed to carry a substantially higher ordnance payload than any other ship in the fleet, it was intended to provide massive firepower in the initial stages of a conflict while operating under an integrated C4I or Command Control Communications Computers and Intelligence System consistent with the joint focus of the 21st century US military. Now the concept of having mass amounts of projectiles or rockets or missiles being launched at a target is nothing new. For the US military, Air Force bombers can deliver huge amounts of ordnance with relatively high precision. However, forward operating bases necessary for high tempo of strike operations may not always be available. Therefore, forward deployed arsenal ships were the Navy's solution. According to Rear Admiral Daniel J. Murphy, Director of the Surface Warfare Division of the Office of the Chief of Naval Operations, the arsenal ship is, quote, best defined as providing multifunctional support to the land battle in its role as a battleship of the 21st century, unquote. Now that's an interesting statement to say that it is a battleship of the 21st century, considering that a battleship is something that's able to take hits as well as give hits, and the arsenal ship certainly is not in that design. It was designed to be given massive firepower in the initial stages and halt the aggressor's advancement, not actually take the beating back. So to place it as a battleship is quite a broad statement. The ship is envisioned to have a highly automated, missile-laden, forward-deployed platform which are capable of providing not only fire support for ground forces ashore, but also theater-air defense and theater-ballistic missile defense. Now, the original concept was designed with approximately 500 vertical launch system or VLS cells and is intended to have the space for future extended range gun systems. This is done so that the ship is able to launch a diverse array of both current and future weapon systems and missiles. Now, the name is fitting for what they wanted to propose to actually put on this platform. Let's go through some of the weapons capabilities of this ship. Initially, a 155mm gun firing extended range guided munitions out to 100 nautical miles or 185 kilometers was to be installed. Tomahawk land attack missiles or TLAMs with a range of approximately 1500 miles and a speed of 548 miles an hour or 885 kilometers an hour would also be installed in some of the 500 different tubes that could be given. 
The Fast Hawk, a variant of the Hawk surface-to-air missile, was in development also at the time, which anticipated the range of approximately 1,000 miles and the terminal velocity of 3.5 to Mach 5. There was also a land attack variant of the Navy's standard missile or SM platform known as the Strike Standard. There was other variants of the standard missile like the SM-2 Block 4, a standard missile with extended range and speed of Mach 2.5 for theater-to-air defense. There was also a naval variant of the 24-inch diameter battlefield missile known as the Army Tactical Missile System or Atticums with a range of around about 60 nautical miles or 295 kilometers. There was also the Sea Slam or SLAM, a variant of the air-launched standoff land attack missile which is a modification of the Harpoon and could deliver a 500-pound warhead over 50 miles or 80 kilometers. And finally, there was the Evolved Sea Sparrow Missile, or ESSM, for self-defense. The Arsenal ship was not necessarily to be deployed with all of these weapons, nor was it intended to be limited to them. Now, the ship did have those 155mm guns, and they were actually to be set in a twin configuration. Their magazines were to be fitted in a modular mounting that would replace the standard 64-cell vertical launching system, or VLS. The gun system was to be fully automated with 1,400 rounds per module. Projectiles were up to around 6.5 feet or 1.9 meters long and weighing around 300 pounds or 136 kilograms and could be handled by the VGS. The sustained rate of fire was to be 15 rounds per minute per barrel. The VGAS evolved into the 155mm advanced gun system developed for the Zumwalt class destroyer. Now there are various different manning of this ship and it's really hard to find accurate information but from what I've found this would be a very minimalistic ship, pretty much all digitalized and given only the bare necessities to keep the ship operational. There will be obviously a commanding officer captain, a XO, and then in terms of operations you would have one operations officer, three quartermasters, one cook, one mess specialist, three communications technicians. In the engineering side of things you would have one engineering officer, one damage control maintenance officer, three engine men, two maintenance technicians, two electricians, and one fireman. For weapons support, there would be one weapons officer, one fire control technician, and then two missile technicians. Now, considering the size of these ships, considering the technological advancements of the number of missiles being fired, this is quite a shocking amount of ship crew to have on something that has up to 500 vertically launched attacking missiles. The ship was also meant to have some form of stealth configuration uh, with a vertical replenishment deck also on the forward deck with a potential helicopter on there as well. But the more you ask of this ship, the more crazy it seems because the reality is it's just a lot to ask for such a big ship. Sadly though, it was a great disaster for the US Navy and its allies with the VGAS was turned into the AGS on the whim of an admiral's decision just so the new 155mm gun could fire conventional ammunition of the course of the cost of developing a trainable turret meant that there was no money to develop the conventional munition it could fire in resulting of the AGS system, which was so big and heavy you needed a special ship to carry it on anyway, so it was a bit of a disaster. Had the Arsenal ship gone forward, it is very unlikely that it would have received either battleship or cruiser designations. The Navy was at great pains to emphasize that it was not a fully functional warship, it had no sensors to speak of beyond those needed to navigate and launch its weapons without external control from another platform. Most likely it would have been designated as an auxiliary ship in keeping with the Navy's preference for treating it as a basic floating magazine. In effect, an ammunition ship that did not really have to offload its ordnance to another vessel before firing it. Another leading option was to class it as an amphibious ship due to its fire support role. There are some possibilities that seem a little bit more plausible though. You could put it as a fire support ship, which is an existing designation historically used for much smaller designs aimed specifically for amphibious landing support. A AA or AAS ship or auxiliary arsenal ship like the LCS for littoral combat ship. And they also potentially could have called it a AEM or ammunition ship missile based on the ammunition ship idea. This parallels the old AVM designation for the missile test ship Norton Sound. Way back when the Arsenal ship was first being proposed by the US Navy, it held an industry day in Washington to discuss it. Now lots of presentations were given in terms of a proposal from various contractors to get the specific requirements or contracts that they could provide for this ship, but the, really the meeting wasn't going anywhere, there was a lot of military contractors just spouting what they could and could not do, and the Navy really wanted this ship, but listening to those presentations it was clear that the project was never going to get anywhere, 
and they were never actually going to build the ship. For one thing, it was going to require something about 90% of the crew's missiles within the Navy's inventory as it existed, and to replenish that would be insanity to try and get all the other ships in the Navy given their own capabilities. To rely upon just a few of these heavy ships with their own long-range SSMs, or 500 of those missiles, the industry just couldn't keep up with it. And there was a lot of discussion about building only two of them, one for the Atlantic and one for the Pacific. In the Navy's LCS program, it's come under a lot of criticism because there was no clearly stated need for the ships and the Navy was trying to figure out what they'd actually be good at. The Arsenal ship was a more extreme example of what was happening with that program and proved that the Navy should never really let an admiral push an idea through that it hasn't been rigorously reviewed first. Not only was there the small crew, the idea was that they could be evacuated from the ship in the high threat area or when their ship was about to enter true combat, leaving it under the combination of a local computer or remote control to launch the rest of the missiles. That's right, they would literally turn it into a floating missile ship that would just sit around in the ocean, just launching missiles automated to whichever target it was given, which is very, very interesting because when you have something remote controlled of that kind, you've got to think how, you know, technology is changing to the point where it could have been hacked and the receiving target information could be transferred to your fleet instead of the enemy fleet. Very, very interesting. The fact, though, that it didn't require a lot of expensive equipment, such as that of a full radar suite that a real warship would need, not to mention there would be no need to build the hull to be full naval standards, because if this thing got hit, I mean, you're done anyway, it would have saved actually a lot of money in its design. But the magazine required for this ship, as I mentioned, was just too much. In 1995, most of the Tomahawks in service were classified in number, but it's reported to be around about 2,000 or so, give or take a few hundred. A single Arsenal ship was supposed to carry something like 1,700 of these, but the Arsenal ship was a pet project of the Chief of Naval Operations at the time. He was a surface ship kind of guy. He wanted a 21st century battleship. Like the hierarchies, when a guy in charge comes up with an idea, lots of people run around trying to make it work, even if they think it's totally stupid. However, Deep Strike was a huge growth field for the Navy after the First Gulf War, and the successes of Tomahawk missiles just completely obliterating land and surface-based targets did very, very well for itself during that conflict. And when we see the Gulf War, the First Gulf War, of course, you see constant barrages of missiles and a lot of them coming from Navy ships. And the surface guys of the Navy saw a chance to steal some mission space from the carriers but they didn't want to fill up all of the weapon slots of the destroyers and strike capabilities of ships because air defenses still had to have a dominant role in their thinking and that could still demand lots of weapons necessitating for just defending the fleet. So if you fill a ship with all of its missile tubes with surface-based missiles, you're reducing the capability of the anti-air or anti-ship missiles being put on board. But after 50 years as the global symbol of America's military might, the aircraft carrier could potentially be pushed off the center stage by this new warship if there was the defense capability to create such massive arsenals of missiles. When you look at the arsenal ship, it's kind of making sense what they're trying to achieve, but sadly it never came to be, and a bit of a sad ending to this story of this ship. At the forefront of the arsenal ship conception was the vision of Admiral Jeremy M. Burda. Uh, who was the chief of naval operations. Now he sought for that cost-effective, versatile vessel, often referring to it as the model equivalent of that battleship. His emphasis on the ship's role as the artillery battery aligned with the Navy's evolving strategy of fighting close to shore against mines, coastal targets, and armies further inland. But the reality was it was just too expensive and there was just too much controversy going on in the Navy at the time, which really, really unfortunately led to his suicide, yes. The Admiral actually killed himself, did leave suicide notes. We're not going to go into the intricacies of that. It's really not necessary, but it is a sad ending um, because, you know, of course, everyone has ideas, new ways of thinking, new ways of doing things. But in conclusion, the Arsenal ship concept really faced huge skepticism and internal struggles within the Navy as it was. Um, its proposal ignited crucial discussions in the US Navy about the future of its strategy, force structure, and the role of innovative technologies in maintaining maritime superiority. Whether the Arsenal ship would have materialized or not, its legacy lies in challenging the traditional naval norms and inspiring creative solutions to address that dynamic nature of modern warfare. It's hard to say whether or not the Arsenal ship really had um, people sticking up for it or if it was doomed from the start, but for myself, I'm an advocate for it. I think it'd be really cool to have a ship that could launch mass volleys and missiles to protect or engage other fleets or surface-based targets because it would just overwhelm defensive capabilities like sea whiz, etc. 
But I'd love to hear your opinion. What do you think of the Arsenal ship? Do you think it's something that's completely redundant? Should never even be conceptualized? Huge waste of money? I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions. Please let me know in the comment section below. Thank you for all of you who have been supporting my channel, whether it be via Patreon, PayPal, or just subscribing and commenting. I really cannot thank you enough, especially to those who have been donating towards my channel. Your contributions really do help me out. Thanks again, everyone, and I hope you have an absolutely wonderful day. All the best. Bye-bye.